So this is another model we looked at, the emu mic a transgenic line, which is uh, well studied in the context of lymphomagenesis. And uh, when crossed to the NKG2D knockouts, we saw an acceleration of the disease, but not much change in the type of, of cancer, as far as we could tell at least. Uh, and, and also this, in this system, we did not see alterations in NKG2D ligand expression, suggesting there may be multiple uh, mechanisms by which you can evade this system. Uh, not just loss of the ligands from the cells. And in some other models we looked at, we, we did not see a phenotype. Uh, for example, in the uh, P53 uh, knockout uh, T lymphoma model, we, we, we do not see a phenotype. And indeed, we never see ligand expression in that model, which, which I think is, 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 is makes, you know, fits, but uh, it raises some interesting questions. So having um, implicated NKG2D in, in tumor surveillance, we, we, we were particularly interested in the regulation of these ligands in the tumor cell because in this case, the burden seems to be on the target cell or the transformed cell to, 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 to recognize that it's a cancer cell and display these ligands, which ultimately lead to their elimination. So we think of this as a host defense mechanism. So what, what cues and pathways control expression of these uh, various NKG2D ligands? So uh, Stefan Gasser, uh, a former postdoc in the lab, uh, initially investigated this by simply subjecting cells to many forms of stress. And, and, and as Jean-Zu mentioned, his, his, uh, the most interesting finding was that really of, of the stress, uh, uh, stress uh, types that he, he examined, genotoxic stress was, was very prominent in inducing expression of NKG2D ligands. And the other forms of stress we examined in, in this analysis on these cells were, really had no effect. So, we saw induction by various agents that either, either damage DNA or impart uh, replication stress, like this uh, ephedicolin, which of course inhibits uh, DNA replication. But all these treatments have in common the, uh, act, that they activate the DNA damage response, which is involved in, in helping cells that have damaged DNA, inhibiting the cell cycle, uh, enhancing DNA repair functions, and in some cases, in causing the cells to undergo apoptosis or become senescent when the damage is uh, extensive. And uh, that pathway, the DNA damage response, is typically initiated by these sensors, uh, ATM and, and ATR, uh, which, um, which uh, are involved in, in detecting DNA damage of various types and initiating a downstream cascade of uh, of uh, protein phosphorylation that ultimately has the various effects that I just mentioned. And so in a series of experiments, Stefan showed that if we, if we blocked uh, ATR or ATM function, depending on the form of DNA damage, uh, we could indeed uh, inhibit the induction of uh, NKG2D ligands resulting from treatment with agents that activate the DNA damage response. So this argued that indeed this pathway was involved in activating these ligands. And indeed, not just um, ATM and ATR, but also downstream uh, mediators like the CHECK1 uh, kinase were also uh, implicated by, by the similar approach. So these, argue, these, these experiments uh, argued that DNA damage induces NKG2D ligands on cell lines. It depends on the uh, DNA damage response uh, pathway. And, and not shown here, but I want to emphasize this, is that uh, the constitutive expression, uh, that, that many tumor cells constitutively express NKG2D ligands. Uh, and indeed, we could inhibit the expression of NKG2D ligands on those cells by inhibiting the members of the DNA damage response pathway in a similar way. And this fits with evidence that suggests that tumor cells in many cases have a chronically active or constitutively active uh, DNA damage response due to hyperreplication and uh, 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 replication stress and, and probably other uh, mechanisms, uh, genome instability. So um, the DNA damage response and is constitutively active in tumors and is believed to provide an earlier barrier to tumor genesis. And in work that I'm not going to show you, we subsequently showed that although the DNA damage response induces higher levels of transcripts of, of these ligands, uh, it turns out it does not induce transcription, but rather stabilizes the Ray1 messenger RNAs. So this led to this, uh, or we tried to fit it into this uh, simplified uh, pathway of uh, tumor genesis, wherein uh, initial events uh, lead to uh, 
uh, replication, uh, hyperreplication, and, and activation of the DNA damage response, and of course, activation of P19 ART. And, and many elegant studies have shown that this leads to or can lead to cell cycle arrest, senescence, apoptosis, and serve as a barrier to tumor genesis, wherein mutations in the appropriate uh, tumor suppressors can enable the cells to bypass that and, and go on to form a tumor. And, uh, and, uh, and our work here suggested that there may, as in addition, be this immune system mediated component in which you activate ligands for NK cells. Uh, these, uh, these result in lysis of, of tumors by NK cells and in some cases T cells and serve as a second uh, level of uh, tumor suppression. So I'd like to tell you a little bit about more recent work in which we've been trying to understand the pathway in detail because I think there's some opportunities here for targeting this pathway. And, and this is based on Stefan Gasser's subsequent work. He actually uh, has his own lab now at, at the University in Singapore. And uh, so some of this was started in my lab and, and finished now in his lab. Uh, and he um, made the finding that, that DNA transfections into cells actually induce NKG2D ligand. So this is a transfection simply of, of any old plasma DNA into these cells. In, induces expression of, see these Ray1 ligands, these are antibodies against various isoforms of Ray1. Uh, and um, a single strand of DNA perhaps uh, can as well, um, although I don't want to overstate the potential meaning of that. And, and, and genomic DNA can have that effect as well, and this is the control uh, activating the cells with a DNA damaging uh, agent. And uh, this led us to think about uh, how DNA uh, transfection could activate uh, other aspects of immunity. And I want to summarize here for the non-immunologist the fact that there are, uh, it turns out to be nucleic acid sensors in the cytoplasm of cells that are involved in the immune response. So results over the last, uh, I don't know, 20 years now and, and still building have, have, have identified many innate immune receptors that are often expressed by many different cell types that are designed to detect pathogens that reside uh, extracellularly, but also intracellularly. So, so receptors on the surface, like the some of the toll-like receptors can recognize extracellular pathogens, but some of the toll-like receptors are expressed in, in endolysosomes, where they can also recognize uh, pathogens in that compartment. But there's a series of, of sensors also in the cytoplasm of cells, and some of them ex detect RNA and DNA uh, that presumably is inappropriately in the cytoplasm. Uh, and so, obviously, it may depend on the form of nucleic acid. And, and these are involved in recognizing, uh, say, viral RNAs or, or potentially viral DNAs in the case of, of the DNA sensors. So I wanted to focus then on this notion of the DNA sensors in the cytoplasms of cells. And the uh, available data done by, by many groups uh, argues that uh, DNA is sensed by several types of sensors, in fact, the main ones may not yet be identified, or some of them have not yet been identified. Uh, and RNA uh, is, is detected by Rig I or MDA5, and, and the signal's mediated through this protein mass. But common to both of these pathways is the activation of TBK1 and subsequently IRF3, leading to uh, expression of, of, of uh, many downstream targets of, of IRF3. Um, and so, so the, the, this suggested the possibility that NKG2D ligands were, were being activated by a pathway dependent on these mediators. I'll, I'll point out that other, intracite, other sensors, like some toll-like receptors, also, are act, also work through the TBK1 IRF3 um, pathway. So this was the hypothesis then that the, that the DNA damage response in, in cells may actually result in, by an unknown mechanism, in DNA being presented in the cytoplasm, activating the DNA sensor, uh, activating these, uh, these uh, mediators, and ultimately, still by an unknown mechanism, leading to Ray1 uh, mRNA stabilization. And this shows some evidence that supports this idea in which uh, uh, Stefan looked at, uh, I don't know how well you're going to see it in this light, but um, that uh, in single-stranded uh, DNA-specific antibody can, uh, can actually stain the cytoplasm in cells uh, that um, are activated, are, are treated with, with this DNA damaging agent, but not in control cells that are treated with DMSO. And, and this, uh, this single strand of DNA uh, is specific because uh, it's, the staining is eliminated if the, if the cells are, pre are treated with S1 nuclease. Uh, and, and similarly, um, 
uh, double-stranded RNA can be detected in the cytoplasm of, of these cells, and the control here shows uh, that DNA eliminates that signal. And again, not in the untreated cells. So this suggests that DNA may indeed be in the cytoplasm in these cells. And um, the next, and a related question then was whether IRF3 and TPK1 are important for activation of, of the NKG2D ligands. And um, the first finding was that, that uh, DNA damage uh, in fact activates TBK1 and IRF3 shown here by intracellular staining of phosphorylated versions of, of those proteins uh, with relatively late kinetics, which in fact is what we see with respect to induction of, of NKG2D ligands. And this experiment looks at uh, cytopla uh, nuclear localization of, of IRF3 uh, GFP that's been transfected into the cells and, and cells with um, with uh, exposed to DNA damaging agents uh, undergo nuclear localization of IRF3, but not of a uh, mutant form of IRF3 that cannot be uh, phosphorylated. And that, that actually can be inhibited by inhibitors of ATM and, and ATR, uh, shown sorry, here. <clears throat> so uh, subsequently, we investigated whether, whether deficiencies in, in IRF3 or TBK1 impair Ray1 expression. And, and doing knockdown experiments, uh, we were able to show that knocking down IRF3 inhibits the uh, amount of induced uh, Ray1 in, in, these, in these cell lines, or, uh, and as well as knockdown of TPK1 reduces the amount of induced uh, Ray1 in these cells. Uh, this is an experiment with, with fibroblasts from uh, TPK1, uh, IKK epsilon double knockout uh, fibroblasts. And those cells, it turns out, were not inducible with uh, RSC, but um, when they were restored with TBK1 by transduction, uh, we saw some uh, Ray1 expression uh, without induction and then a higher level uh, after induction with, uh, after treatment with RSC. So this indeed suggested a role for, for TBK1 in this process. <clears throat> 